please welcome back Anya's Varda and JR. So I saw it again for the third, fourth time. Um, it is such a layered film. I, I don't even know where to begin with the first question. But one of the things that amazes me is you, that you go out into the world and you take portraits of all these people, the two of you together, because it's both your ideas. And it ends up being just as much a portrait of the two of you. I mean, this film is all about portraiture. So, I don't know, was that a conception in, in the editing? Did you know that that's where it was going? Th that's actually the exact point where we don't agree. <laughs> but I like it. That's a great question. Uh, because I always wanted to um, make a, 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 you know, a portrait of Agnes in the film. And after we went and traveled together and met people and started f documenting, she started letting me, you know, uh, get a bit closer, photograph her hand, her ears, you know, her toes. And, uh, and so slowly it became, yes, a little bit of a portrait of one and the other in, you know, in the background of the main subject that was meeting people. But of course we did met on this film, you know, so... I guess uh, it's, but Agnes always thought, no, we don't talk about us. You know, it's not about us. And so the film is that negotiation. Well, it's very rare that she don't have something to correct me. <laughs> Normally that, you know, that moment should be engraved in time. And like, we should make a marble and write it. This is the time and hour where Agnes didn't correct JR. You know, she's just bored. <laughs> not agree all the time yeah, no, but normally you say yes but no and then you start you know <laughs> yes but no but that's, that's what our life is made of yes but no and no and yes because we are always mixing different things the m aim was to do a correct and modest documentary and we d we did it but it is true you got interested in my aging and because you love old people. No, it is true, he has made a lot of photos about old people. He cared about his grandmother, so he was not lost to be with me. But I'm the one who allowed him to do things, especially, I must say. He has been doing A's on many places. I I've seen photos of eyes in, in Kenya, in India, everywhere. So had to be vaguely different. That's why I allow him to photograph my toes, because then I would know that on the train, I would be the only one we have <laughs> that his toes traveling. Yeah, you'll stay the only one, and yes, I promise. I will never photograph anyone else's toes. <laughs> I'm so privileged, you know. <laughs> no, now, let's stop the little stories about us, because we have been really working together because we had the same aim in a way. The same empathy for people and thinking that when we were somewhere, chance will lead us to one person among the people in the villages that would be more interesting. And it really happened. No? Oui. <laughs> <laughs> it is true that in the north of France, let's take an example, we knew that there were these streets almost uh, come on, demoli demolished. Yeah. And there were some people saying, so first we, we knock at the door, and the son of a woman said, oh, get away. Well, <laughs> so we go to <laughs> another street. <laughs> true. Yeah, it's true, it's true. And then we knock, and here comes Janine. Yeah. So we started to speak with her, and she became so much part of what we had in mind. She called old miners to bring memories, and it, it built itself, thanks to her, right? Yeah, that's true. And, and you know, but like you said, we, we allow chance to arrive. So 
we actually went in most of those places with no plans at all. And by having no plans, of course, a lot of people no, would get stressed. And the plan was to see, meet... That's how normally she like corrects every question. No, that's the normal. Because the plan was to meet one of these people who didn't want to leave their houses. Yeah, but we didn't know who. So when you go in a place, normally people want to know exactly what they're going to feel, know exactly at what time. We were just knocking mm -hmm. doors with the full crew of filming and everything. You agree? Yes. Ah, thank you. So we can continue. Shall we continue? So, I mean, what was what is really magical for me about this film when you say, so we knock on the door with a full crew, but I never for a minute until you get on the train together realize, oh, these pictures are being taken by other people, not by you, but by other people behind you. And then there's that moment where you finally take off your glasses and we see what we see is your subjective vision. And at that moment, we realize that we've not seen any, the way you see precisely, subjectively now. And that moment is just shattering. You know, it is so beautiful. So that's what I have to say. <laughs> Elle te, elle te disait juste que on sent pas le, 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 la caméra nous suivre, que le seul moment où elle a réalisé ça, c'était dans le train. Et le seul moment où elle a réalisé ton subjectif suggéré de ton flou, c'est quand euh, tu j'enlève mes lunettes à la fin. Mais so I was là, surprised because we came back at the end of the film and when you take your glasses off, yeah. people laugh. And is it laughable or is it funny or not funny? No, I cry. Some people get touched, some people laugh. That's what it is all about. Because an audience is not one piece, you know. Uh, an audience is many people having different reactions. And the feedback is interesting because it comes from different feelings, different. Well, some people told me, oh, I cried all the way through the film. Some people, what a good comedy. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> and we say, oh, oh, but it's mostly a documentary. So we come back to correct the thing that what we wanted really is to be the go-between, the people we filmed and you. So I, I feel, I hope, now you know Janine, you know the mailman, you know the workers in the chemical factory, you know this work, come on, the docker, docker workers. Yeah, dockers. And their wives, you know them now. I, I hope you won't forget them because photography is to fill in the memory, the holes in your memory. I mean, that's, mm. yeah, and photographs. You know, so when any photo you take, and you know, uh, I think it was Cartier-Bresson, but I forgot who said that, but that basically ev any photo he have ever taken, he actually haven't seen the moment because when you click, you know, there's that millisecond where you don't see what you should. So it's the instinct of the instant, but you actually don't see what you should. So you only see it in picture, but you haven't lived it. Now with digital camera, it's another story. <laughs> <laughs> so do people have questions? Way in the back. Well, it's not the documentary about the crew. <laughs> <laughs> And the crew was very discreet. We had two cameras for the images, one man for the sound, and four people to paste and glue, and then somebody to help managing. And the fact that we let them appear sometimes is pure. It's purely because uh, w you know we, th we didn't see any boundaries between us, the crew. But of course, when image were taking, you know. Uh, uh, because instant were happening and we didn't even have to uh, time to direct some time. So most of the time, you know, they, they did an incredible job by just disappearing in, you know, uh, the, the journey we were doing and discovering as we were doing it. There was no, we didn't but write they, before we would go we to some place. We wanted the crew, and especially the image, to be ready the same way we were ready that chance would bring us somebody. It happened many times, including in the factory. Suddenly that month's 
who had a nice costume, you know, we say, oh, are you going somewhere? And he say, it's my, my last day in the factory. And the minute he started to speak, the camera was here on the sound because he said something which is an incredible testimony. And we, I think we have been blessed not to miss that because he said it maybe once, he would never say it again. And it was so incredibly strong because we hear, especially in France, manifestation, people really mad at when is the age of the retraite, come on, the retraite, the retirement. retirement. And 62, 65, we should get more money. We should have a special treat about this and that. So the retreat is always seen as something to come. And I never, we are not enough imagination, but I never felt what it is after 30 years in a factory to finish the day. And it was so interesting. So we got something that I didn't, I learned that it could be felt like this and we share it with you because I was touched by that man. And you must have been touched so strong what he says. So that's why we had to be ready for things to happen, people to speak, something, sometime in the air. We felt something happening. You know, we need to have eyes looking all over, ear listening in the back, you know. We have to be totally um, devoted, no, come on, uh, totally ready. Alert is. We talk in Morse when we want to say certain things to each other. Yes. No, it was not prepared. Uh, we knew what kind of people we wanted to meet, but nothing was written because even our question would come according to what and what. And in each place, sometimes we went twice, like with the factory, we went three times. In some villages, we went twice. And, well, the editing was very long because we did it, we shot over 18 months one week per month. And then we started to build the editing and feeling, well, we should have something well. Ah, uh, something is missing in the South. Or why about farmers nowadays? So we were building what was missing, then looking for a place. Then we heard about that abandoned village, you know, that had been not totally constructed. Ab 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 come on, abandoned, yeah, abandoned is. And we said, what's that? It's an ID. We will get people. So we sent a girl a week, I heard, say, go in the villages around, tell them they will do a little feast on Saturday, that Saturday, and there will be a picnic, and they can have images for free. We always said, nothing has to be paid, no advertising, nothing, no sponsors. So people came, and we did some sandwiches and little food, and w we had an incredible day because it's like, comment on dit repeuplé? I mean. Repopulated for one day. But it, I know it's hard to believe, but uh, the truth is we just, you know, uh, w we believe in the moment. And uh, we were so confident in the fact that no, ev even if nothing happened, it would be a moment. And that's the proof at the end of the film. Um, but I mean, First, we, we couldn't have scripted anything of that, you know, the, we wouldn't even have sat to, to do it, that that was not the way we work. Sometime we're like, well, we, you know, like in the factory, when we go back a couple of times, yes, we start thinking, okay, now let's, you know, let's film in that alleyway, let's try to organize a few moments, but we would always let the magic happen. And a few times where we try to actually, you know, like let's have a discussion with the oldest person in the factory and with me and, it would always be so bad that we, you know, we <laughs> it would stay in the edit for one day and then we'd be, oh my God, it's, it's terrible. So we uh, actually, d you know, there's not much pasting we haven't used. Of course, we did much more like little project with communities and we were not going to, you know, put them all, but uh, we haven't lost that much. We, most of the time, each day was a special day. Yeah. It was like, the we were lucky or we were in good mood we were really into it, you know. Even when we were just staying at her house eating chouquette, it was a good day. <laughs> yeah, down here. What do you feel about Godard? I, I, you know, I, I have my own theory about it. 
that you know he was behind the door just so you know that's not a question he was there because we were supposed to meet and he changed the time which was supposed to be 11 30 he changed to 9 30 and then happened what happened now one thing you have to imagine is he moved it because he didn't want Agnes to wait you know until 11 30 and waste her her day so by you know li leaving her door closed his door closed at 11 at uh, 9 30 he knew we could take maybe an earlier t an earlier train well what we did is right after that is we really went to the lake and when we finished shooting and improvised that little moment not knowing that would be the end of the film at all but just thinking okay we have time we have nothing to do and the, the next train is in the afternoon um we filmed that but we were done you know before 12. and i remember uh, uh thinking on the way back i'm like wait but you know we had time to kill and they didn't even call each other to be like okay outside of that very harsh poetry of like s you know uh, by writing what he wrote he sent Agnes back to an amazing summer they had 40 years or 50 years before and he's is in a way saying we live this incredible moment that summer and it's not by opening my door old and crampy and sitting and asking you how you feel and how's your back and what are you doing and having all this on camera that is going to bring us back to those amazing year and by not opening the door he helped our film of course but also what amazed me is that they didn't even call it afterward i thought that okay that was cinema that's what happened it was real life but it became cinema but i thought that in real life they would call and be hey, okay like let's meet at the corner of this and that and just <laughs> i want to hug you because i might never see you again all right the, but don't come with the kid with the sunglasses because i don't want to see him and i would be fine with like like that's your story just you know that that's but no and she didn't even thought about it and i'm sure he didn't even thought about it and then i thought about it and like they're not only uh, uh uh you know making cinema they leave cinema that's their way of poetry and they apply it to life to the full extent and when i told that to Anya, she was like why no i mean no you know and and but to me it's beautiful it's just that in my generation i would be like okay yeah we did that that's amazing now let's all hug and let's talk about it and how great it's gonna be they might never meet again and that that i uh, you know inspire me deeply do you agree or you don't this time you're doing my scripting <laughs> <laughs> no, what i thought was that i was surprised I didn't think it would happen. But then, because what he wrote on the door was so deeply moving for me because it was related to Jacques Demy and whatever touches Jacques Demy puts me to very, very deep sorrow and strong feeling. So, because he connected my visit with his friendship to Jacques Demy and to us, I was shocked. And then, when we went to the lake, I tried to understand, and what I thought is that we had sp spent good time together with Anna Karina, you know, Jean-Luc, Jacques Demi and me. We spent beautiful time, and it's in the past, so I thought, I don't forget, you know, we had a good time. But then life has separated us, and for some reason maybe it was right not to open the door, because what we would say, hello, how are you, and doesn't make sense, because we, we met like every five years. And when we met last time, he had done the film Socialism, in which he had borrowed a sequence of uh, my Beaches of Agnes. He borrowed the sequence, put it in Socialism. So it was okay, you know. We, we have good relationship, but don't, don't we, we don't see each other. So I say, why, why to see us again? And I think you were smart again on the, on the, near the lake. Because he's the one who said he's building the screenplay anyway. He added a page to the screenplay. So I was just feeling what I was feeling. And we kept it for the end of the film because after all these easy people opening their doors, <laughs> being very <laughs> open, very nice, we, we got it in the face. <laughs> I say, well, we should learn that. No, not, not everybody is lovely. And, and, and I thought, who in his own or in her life has never felt a closed door. It's something that we have all experienced once. And uh, I felt it's part of the film. It's part of what happened. 
and the way that he wanted to be so nice with me when he had been not nice all the time, you know. And that at time, he felt for me, and he was, come on, he m'a tapé sur l'épaule, comme ça. And, and then, you. yes, and then, <laughs> what can he do? Take his, uh, it became a sort of second little screenplay along the field. It was a joke that I would say, why don't you take your glasses off? Because I know his eyes, you know, when he's with me, he doesn't wear his glasses. So in the film, we had to play the game, why don't you get your glasses off? Why don't you show your eyes? But it happened naturally that he wanted to be nice, so he did that. And people laughed because he's out of focus. So it's, if you think you would have seen his eyes, you got it, you know, <laughs> no. So it became a joke and a very touching gesture, I think. So everything is like this, double reading, you know. It's sad, but it's nice. We actually fought a lot on how out of focus it should be. Because she was like, I don't see that bad. I'm like, yes, you do. Or you better do, because if not, I'm not showing my eyes. Uh, we we'll never know. She's the only one who knows how she actually but we sees. we exaggerated so. the out of focus, I have <laughs> yeah. to say, okay. to please him. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask a, uh, an editor's question. Uh, after this happened, and you didn't get the ending you expected from JLG, is that when you decided to put the, sh the sequence from Cleo at the beginning, or had you always just meant to have that there? The minute, the minute I went to the studio of JR, the first day, I took a picture of him, and I understood, as I said in the narration, that he will not take his glasses off. And he reminded me exactly that uh -huh. I had known Godard, he came on the shooting on Cleo, you know, the resulted sketch where they all came on a bridge, Godard and Anna. And at that time, I wrote little stupid things like, oh, uh, comment you put it, uh, bad glasses. Stupid eyes. Uh, stupid, yeah. they make me see life differently. And he took his glasses off, which was very rare at the time. And uh, we saw his beautiful <laughs> eyes. And, and it was, so I write a minute when I saw Jay, I say, hey, and it's the beginning of the film, you say, at least Godard took his glasses off. But I didn't think it would become yeah. so important at the end. When we shot the Louvre, we didn't know also, we just had access to the Louvre because I was doing something on the pyramid. And on the Tuesday, the Louvre is closed. So when Agnes came and filmed me on the Monday, I think, and then we were just filming outside, she was like, oh, I don't know if I'll use any of that for our film. I mean, it's your project, I have nothing to do with the film. And I say, oh, look, but tomorrow the Louvre is closed. We could go and, I don't know, do something. It's like, oh, we should do something for Godard because, you know, he had this famous scene. And that's how we, you know, took a wheelchair and started running in, not knowing where we would put it, yeah, you know. The, the way of, there was a kind of spirit of Godard that came at the beginning at the Louvre and it ended to film. So it was not built like this, but... And you found that photo pretty late also. When he was yeah. 33. And that's, yeah. you know, that, that was, one day she sent me that and I was like, wow. And, and you know, I didn't realize that at all. And I like say, oh, on that, I was exactly 33. Here comes a young man. I'm 33 now. Enough good eye, good he can't take you. over good everything. Good for you. Uh, <laughs> in the back. It's a question about when the narration was written. Was it written after and during the editing? The commentary. Yeah. The, the voiceover uh, ah. narration. Yes. Uh, sometimes I think of some narration when we shoot. A little idea here there. Then in the editing room, Jaya would come, and with our iPhone, we would just try sentences and try them right away with the editor mm -hmm. and say, well, no, maybe not. Come back another day. We start. It built like this little by little. And then try to cut it down because should be a minimum of narration, if possible. But sometimes it pushes the people some, some side little trails. It, it brings something. Well, you know, some beautiful documentaries are made, silent with no narration, like wise man, incredible directors. But I like the, the fact that to get the best of everybody, sometimes we push things a little. But uh, that's what Agnes is really mastering, and I had to learn. So she would, you know, 
uh, spent hours teaching me the voiceover and it was hard for me. I thought I would never make it. We had to go a few times in studio. We, we tried in our iPhones. And then recently we did the, the bonus, you know, for the DVD. And we actually just played it, put our iPhone and started talking like, you know, in one take. We just did the whole bonus uh, because we would let the space for each other. And, and now we find, you know, a little duo when, uh, when we need to voice over. But you like to improvise. You hate the idea that we could prepare it. So yeah, because I'm not good at it at all. So and I know we, we you know, I trust the the instinct. So we improvise and then we write it down and put it. It's it's a long, uh, you know, the editing, the shooting was over th uh, eighteen months, a, a week, a month, and the editing was like five months, because we have to find how these different stories. We cannot put them one after another like sketches. So we had to find the fluidity. We had to find a kind of way that we take you by the hand, come with us, travel in and France. And that's you. really Agnes. She signed the edit because that's really something where she had the patience I don't have for that. And I would come and uh, we would fight a lot. We fight. Uh, we f criticize. We fought, yeah, criticize. <laughs> and then at some point, because she was not hearing any of my critics, I said, okay, look, leave me with the editor. Let me give him my critics. Then you come back and you decide what you want to keep. And, uh, and we had a good, uh, no, you know. We did well. We did well because we wanted the subject to be in the middle of the film. Are those people that we met interesting? Uh, are they put in a way with your images, your big images? Do we put light on them? Do we put value? Do these people who were out of power, you know, we we gave them a real existence in the film, a real personality that we could get the best of them, so that we we wanted you to love them, we wanted you to know them and feel that you have met them. That was the point, and some of them, you know, that like the farmer, you know, it's a lonely man, but it's interesting what he says. And I love the passion of the lady who wants to keep the horns of her goats because she believes in the beauty of the animal. So all these things were side subject. We, we took them seriously because we met people who took them seriously. And, and liberating the imagination of people. Like the man who speaks about the goats, he say, we cut them little balls of ping pong so they would hurt. <laughs> I mean, the man made it up, you know. I mean, it was not question and answer. We put people in a situation they could invent, be free. And I love the idea that he gave about the, the horn that we should be called protector. We, we were lucky to meet these people and we are glad that you love them now. I decide that you love them now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Anya. Thank you, Thank JR. You, Thank, you Thank you for the film. Um, this film opens, tell your friends. This film opens on Friday in New York.